Are there points thinking um, about the new film, um, First Cousin Once Removed, where you wonder if you're stepping a mark too far? And perhaps you bring Noe in here as well because she was involved in the production of I Am Breathing, which is about a man who, um, after a year of filming, died of motor neuron disease. Where, did you? Did you feel that this is a story about a man with Alzheimer's? Should I be doing this? Um, if we had seen the film, I would give you okay. a different answer than I would just in general. But um, I'll just give you the personal answer. Uh, well, I, I can, there are a lot of different answers. But the main answer is, um, no, I never thought of, I never hesitated twice. I think it's an interesting issue, but I never experienced it as a conflict because Simply put, that's what I do. You know, I am now um, in a life of trying to explore, deeply explore what it means to be human and this nexus of family relationships. This is a man, a cousin, a friend, a former mentor who I was very, very close to, you know, and um, who was also a poet with a capital P and who knew what it meant to be a poet and the idea that that he would have trusted me as his cousin, friend, and, and former, I want to say student, but we loved each other. And so the idea that I would um, be exploring his life up to the very end and allowing people to think, to, to think about memory and identity and life and death and aging, mortality and, all the th and love and family relationships and all those, that other cauldron I alluded to just a few moments ago in a new way, in a, in a way that's very raw, if you will. But I mean, that's, those are the risks that I take as an artist that I've been working towards my whole life. And he's a poet, again, with a capital P, who, knew that, who knows, who knew that the lives of artists are, um, are, are, the lives of poets especially, are there to teach us about making the invisible visible. And what, what, you know, the truth behind the dark, the, the truth about life, and, and to shine light on the dark spaces of human frailty. So that, that's simply put, I'm supposed to take those risks. My whole life has led up to that, and I did, did so proudly, actually. Um, in a way, with the I'm Breathing, you, you have a central character who feels exactly the same way, don't you? The, the, this man who wants to take the risk of putting himself in front of the camera. Absolutely, but I mean, Emma kind of is behind <laughs> the director, so she can, um, she was kind of you know, directly confronted with that. But I think it's back to what you're saying, Alan. It's about making the invisible visible. And that uh, uh, translation is what makes kind of every film unique uh, and every filmmaker unique, because that translation is going to be different from anyone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure kind of you know, Emma's translation of what, you know, bringing kind of Neil's life onto screen and going beyond kind of, you know, his life, literally, um, is very personal to a way of directing because you are, Emma, saying something else kind of you know, with it. It's not, it's not just a general truth. It's at the end of the day what each of us kind of, you know, at the time is thinking or feeling. But this, this is kind of tough conversation because, in fact, uh, as, as filming itself is very easy now, like everyone can make, um, it's still a question, if you have a pen, you are still not Dostoevsky, right? Even if everyone has a pen, it doesn't mm. mean you are Dostoevsky. And, and if you have a camera, it still doesn't mean you can go inside life of others so far if you if you're not given same level of um, I that's why I suggest we if you go to such sub tough subject we have to work hard to be equal to situation it could be funny uh, explanation to this uh, and could be difficult for example uh, once I was making film about people who were born in the same day as me. And one guy called me saying that he, he gonna kill himself. And, um, and, and I did not take camera with me, of course. I just, it was night, it was three o'clock in the night. It was winter, 
February and my car did not start. I, I just uh, I just r ran to his place. It was like 10 kilometers run. And we drink three <coughs> days in a row without opening door. And he's still alive. But but another girl made suicide. And her mother called me saying, oh, she made suicide. You're making film about her. You know she made suicide. And she's in the hospital. And I, I, I took cameras. And I took cameras. me, And I came to the hospital. And I filmed moment when she woke up after after she was but then my mother died during filming and it happened accidental in a way that we were passing my mom every day after filming the whole team were drinking tea with her like because she is funny she's in this funny and everybody enjoyed so we are every night were passing through her house drinking tea in the night and talking and this night she did not, she said, okay, you guys drink tea and I will not. I'm kind of don't feel good. We were sitting, talking, la, 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 la. Then we, uh, we decided to leave and I said, bye. And I realized she dead. She is dead. And then, then my sister said, okay, this is your, this is film. You are going inside the life of others. We have to film it. And my assistant took camera and filmed me closing eyes of my mom. And then it was huge discussion that Kasakovsky is absolutely unmoral person. He filmed death of his mom. It's kind of waiting. It sounds like I was waiting <laughs> <laughs> to hear. To hear you, know. you know, it's every time. It's every time. Oh. Once I made a film in Israel about my teacher who who actually was almost in such conditions almost dead and i f i didn't want to film him because but then his wife called me saying why don't you come to us we didn't see you five times five years just come pavel want to say bye to you and i said okay i will buy a ticket i bought a ticket for two more i called them i buy i bought a ticket and she said why don't you take camera with you i was kind of confused to take camera and okay I called to my friend I called to studio I took Ariflex 35 millimeter and I called to people who has film stuff and I I found nine rolls and I flew to Israel to Israel. I came to the room and I made one shot and I realized I cannot do more I stopped and I four days I did not do anything my trip was five days four days I did not do anything because it was obviously tough. In the fifth day, he was getting feeling better. And he said, listen, I tell you, do you remember? I was his assistant. And he told me, do you remember we were filming people who is test drivers? And like, they, they have a risk job. Like, they have to test new cars. And they push uh, driving on the hell. Like, and they, they have special place to drive car in horrible condition. And it was a film about such people who to, who who test first airplanes, new airplanes. So, and the ta the car driver said, best position for camera would be here. I will drive like this, and it will be a wonderful shot. So we put camera, we start filming. This guy driving, suddenly on the corner, car like flip few times. Like we came to him. We opened his door. He he was alive. First he said, "Did you film it?" <laughs> <laughs> and we say, "No, no, no. We came to help you." And he said, <laughs> and he said something I cannot pronounce. <laughs> like, assholes. You are assholes. You know, this is your job to do this. Then uh, then I start filming this guy. Then I start filming, in the, and then he said, film, this is your job, film. And I start filming him. I was, I start filming him. I was sure when I was in airplane, I was sure I have 90 minutes film, everything, one to one. In my life, it was two experiences when I made film one to one. Like, you, I had 60 meter material of my first film, and I make 60 minutes film. 
I was sure I'm, I have 90 minutes film with me. I came home, I put it in the laboratory to develop. 60% of this was broken in laboratory. I got only 30 minutes. I made film 30 minutes and I throw it. And some people in Amsterdam raising hands and they said, is it not unethical to film person in such condition? Especially it was moment. Uh, he is sitting in a wheelchair and someone helping him to, to move. Uh, his wife, right? And she is, because and, and in Jerusalem this landscape like this, so for her it's difficult to move him. So when she goes up, she does like this, like this. That this is kind of a little bit easier. And I was filming this. And then suddenly in Amsterdam, someone said, this is not ethical to film this. Instead of filming this half shoe, why don't you help her to move him? And I said, listen, there are $500. This is, buy a ticket, fly there, I give you address. You can help her every day. <laughs> <laughs> this is our job, unfortunately. Unfortunately, our job to do filming. 